Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a short follow up to the previous GT710 video. In that one we tested ASUS's new model and found that it still offered the same basic functionality that 710s always have. That's not a bad thing but I was still disappointed that I couldn't overclock it due to the passive cooler which meant that the card already ran at almost 70 degrees in some games. That's when I decided to rig up my cheap liquid cooler to the card. So, I don't have a degree in, uh, well, anything actually, but one thing I do know is that these elastic bands are always a great last resort for holding things in place, until they snap. My sister actually had these hair band things that didn't look like much, but were super stretchable, so in a way, her various hair products made this possible. I'll leave a link to her DIY fashion channel in the description if any of you want to check her videos out. Our janky creation was finally complete and we were ready to game. After trying various settings in MSI Afterburner, it seemed that this 710 was quite unpredictable when it came to which games it wanted to start. Some games ran with a 400 MHz overclock, and some gave us a black screen either during starting or loading. Initially, I settled on a 350 MHz increase to the core clock and a 300 MHz memory increase, even though GPU-Z told me that the memory speed had only increased by about 150 MHz. While editing this video, I saw David does Tech Stuff's video with the same card, and interestingly, his 710 maxed out here as well. So David, you didn't lose the silicon lottery, the card just hates overclocking, or maybe we both lost. In Skyrim Special Edition, our average and 1 percent lows were increased and because the card originally sat at 30 fps on average a 6 fps boost is a very welcome increase because it pushes us further away from the sort of playability line where the frame rate sometimes falls below 30 and sometimes sits just above it the game felt a bit smoother here and the liquid cooler meant that the card hit just 50 degrees during today's gameplay tests this was the maximum i actually saw throughout any of the games tested today. So sticking a liquid cooler on the 710 here with elastic bands looks horrible and isn't ideal, but if it works, then well, who am I to stop you from trying it? This solution was only really possible here though because of the PCI x one interface as the hairbands could go underneath the card without blocking the contacts to the motherboard. Some games didn't really show much of an improvement and Crisis Remastered was one of them. Although we did see closer to 30 FPS overall, the percentile figures were much worse and we were still limited to the pixelated mess that is 800 by 600. The original game would probably do better but I wanted to see what 2020's version could manage. The short answer, not much. The Witcher 3 showed some signs of a frame rate boost, but honestly I think I picked the wrong 710 to liquid cool here because keeping the temperatures down is nice and it helps us boost those speeds, but if the card can't even overclock to a point where the liquid cooler is actually needed, then the whole thing seems a little pointless and for that I apologise for wasting your time. Finally though we should talk about Fortnite because this showed another decent improvement. Just like Skyrim we got an extra 6 or so FPS so it's not all bad, though I think this cooler will be slapped on something a little more beefy in the future. Again, thank you for dedicating 5 minutes of your life to my rather unsuccessful experiment. <laughs> all in all then, if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know what card you'd like to see the liquid cool treatment next and uh, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe too, by the way, if uh, you haven't done so already. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.